Hey there, Jeff Manchester, Manchester Music. What you were just listening to was Noir from Native Instruments slash Galaxy Instruments. And the MIDI you were hearing was not by me, because I couldn't, my finger, I'm going to show you, it's disgusting. I mangled it the other week from a friend, kudos, Matt Hines, for sending over the MIDI, which, uh, better than I could ever play. So, um, but anyway, everything was coming out of Noir, new sample library from Native and Galaxy. I already said that. So... I don't want to go over like every nitty gritty little feature of this piano in this review playthrough. I'm not really sure what this is. What I'd rather do is just focus on the things that make it different and special from other pianos, other native pianos and pianos out there. The first thing you should know is that this is Niels Fromm's piano. This is his Yamaha CFX recorded in in his space, in his studio. Um, I'll put some photos on the screen now. Beautiful tracking sampling process went into this fancy pants ribbon mics. Um, looks like a lot of work went into it. But basically, if you love Niels Fromm, who is in this category, I think, of composers like Olafur Arnolds and Max Richter, Richter, I never know how to pronounce his last name, um, delicate, uh, beautiful, fragile piano pieces, then you will love, I think, this library. Um, so the next thing that makes this piano really special is um, we have this thing called a particles engine over here. And when I turn this on, we can shuffle between the kind of pure piano sounds that sound like this. Or the sounds all the way over here. In this case, we have uh, tonal sounds, mallet, and noise sounds, mechanics. Sounds like this. And when we put them together, we get this really nice blend of... Um, tonal noise sounds and the pure piano underneath. There are a number of, I think native call them snapshots, so we can cycle through those. What you're going to hear is basically the engine itself, which is kind of like a note generator. And you can set it uh, so that it syncs to the host tempo with the density slider over here. In this case, when you have it on, uh, the little metronome, you're getting at different note values, 32nd, 16th notes, 8th notes, quarter notes. Off, you just get milliseconds, which would make sense. So I'm going to switch it back on. And let's go to another, I think we started off with a doubler. Let's go to mallet sequence so you can hear what that sounds like. I'll get the sustain pedal involved here. have a visual representation of what's happening not just the kind of bubbly bubbles but also the piano roll here so for example if I'm in the deep doubler I can see if I play a C over here the other kind of interval the other C that's being triggered or played another. Um, you also get some really nice pad sounds out of this guy. Let's try rumble pad. And we can see that as we change these, obviously, the sounds go from, uh, you know, different sounds over here, tonal, which is piano felt, and it sounds like this. And that's obviously because it's moved this attack slider all the way over here. If we have it all the way here, 
that sounds really cool, but if we weaken the attack, we get a, just a, a nice kind of, almost sounds like a drone. Basically, this is the particles engine section, and I think it sounds really cool. You can also color it up with some different effects here. I do have an effect running through most of the sounds that you're hearing. I'm going to turn the engine off for a second, and that's one of the things that I love about this library, you can bring presence and different things that make you feel like you're kind of in the room. Stuff like the, having the pianist here, which is really cool. So if I turn this up completely, I'll play this the, the opening theme. I'm going to turn up the volume and intensity, which I think correlates to the or corresponds to the frequency of, of noises you hear, like like the bench squeaking and the piano or the pianist, uh, her fingers or his fingers moving off the keys and on the keys. So I'm going to bring these up just to exaggerate it. But this is what I love about these pianos. And they're so well sampled and also sequenced. Um, just so really cool sequencing going on here. Have a listen. Everything's all the way up for effect. So I know that's a lot for some people, but I love it. It just makes me feel like I'm, like I'm in the the pianist's head. It's just it's it's a cool thing. I'm gonna turn this down though, um, and that's the thing is that you have all these effects, but you also have deep control over how much or how little of them you want to affect the overall sound, which is nice. One of the the other competitive advantages that Noir has over um, other libraries, I think, is this sub um, microphone right here, so we can. Uh, go and change the intensity of uh, of this microphone. I'm going to play a certain section, which is kind of um, it has a lot of low notes in this in this uh, lovely prepared MIDI I was sent. And I'm going to turn the sub mics off. You might want to put some good headphones on so you can really hear um, these sub mics when I turn them on. But we'll have them off for now and just hear the kind of intensity and depth that it adds when they're on. First, off. Have a listen. So now I'm going to play that same passage, but we'll have this turned on. Again, headphones are best. So how do I feel about this library? I think that if you like what you hear and saw and heard, you are going to like what you get. And what do you get? You get a fragile, delicate, uh, but very tweakable and detailed and intimate piano. And this is kind of my bread and butter. People get psyched about a Hans Zimmer library or something like that. I could care less. To me, Niels is my Hans Zimmer, as composers go. Um, I don't care about hybrid scoring and big epic rah, rah, rah. It just never really appealed to me. It's the careful, delicate stuff. It's the spaces in between the notes. And this library just sounds so much like Niels, more than Una did, because his piano, his space, his text, all the rest of it. And that makes sense. This sounds like solo. It sounds like spaces. It sounds like all melody. These are Niels Fromm's records, by the way. So I think that if this is, if that's what you're in for, if that's what you want, that's what you're going to get with this piano. The particles engine is really cool. It's kind of like um, a cherry on top. I, I didn't really 
want it. Uh, it's cool that it's there. I think sound designers are going to have a lot of fun with it, especially like syncing it with the host tempo and doing stuff like that. That's really cool. To me, that feels like something that they need to put in order to present this library as a, you know, as having a competitive advantage to other libraries. For me, all they needed to do was release this library and say that it was from Niels Fromm's space and his piano and everything. And that would have sold me the sub microphones, um, Obviously, all of the chairs squeaking and the breathing and the, the mechanical noise, all that stuff just delivers so much for me, the presence and the feeling and the impact that I wanted from a library um, that that was, you know, we hear a lot of kind of their stuff from Spitfire and other people that are kind of mimicking what I've always wanted from um, from a library with Niels's name attached, even though it isn't directly attached with this library. It is kind of in the documentation and, and the marketing. But I've always wanted that. I've always wanted his piano and, and as close to his sound as I could get. Um, and you get it, and I got it with this library. So again, if you like what you hear, that's what you're going to get. And I think what you get is really special and awesome. So that's kind of my, my parting closing words on this library. There's really nothing that I wish they'd done differently. Um, you, I, mean, I could nitpick and say that it would have been nice to have a chamber algorithm for the reverb, but chances are most people are going to put their own reverbs um, after the fact or on an insert or maybe on a send return. Um, there's really nothing I would like to change about this library. One small thing, if anyone's listening, more of a contact thing than a Galaxy thing, but if you could just double click to return parameters to the default position, that would be awesome. Uh, it's just a thing with Adobe uh, and other companies that they do. You just double click, it returns the, you know, instead of having to go, okay, it's not that, do I have to command click or option click or control click? Just a small thing. The other thing is it would have been nice to have um, the bypass for the reverb and delay uh, near the macros themselves so that when I turn the reverb up or the delay up, um, I'm like, I don't hear anything. Oh, I have to go. To, I have to tab to the page where the reverb is to turn it on or off. Just have us turn it on or off from that little macro, from that little slider with a little rectangle or something. I think that would have been helpful. But I'm nitpicking. This library is gorgeous, but I'd love to know what you think of it. Obviously, you're going to let me know anyway. Hit me up in the comments. Um, I'll leave some end cards to similar videos. Uh, what did you think? Are you going to get it? Are you not going to get it? Let me know. Take care.